Welcome back to another episode of Coffee and Van Chats. I'm here with Dante Young, and he has just moved to Boulder, Colorado, which is like an hour away from me. And I decided to bug him, get him on the podcast, because I've heard a lot about this guy, fixed gear guy. Uh, Kelly's in the background scratching his ear and doing all that weird stuff, being super <laughs> distracting. Uh, but I just kind of, yeah, I just want to chat with him and get to know him as an athlete. And I want you guys to get to know him as an athlete. So, Dante, how you doing, man? I'm good, man. I'm good. Just uh, getting acclimated to this boulder life. The smoke and the altitude. So you moved from yeah. smoke and now you're in altitude. I literally, I, uh, it's funny because like the smoke hadn't really gotten to where I was living. I was saying in uh, Santa Monica and like yeah. the day after I left, it just kind of like seeped into LA. And then as soon as I got here, it was just like crazy amounts of smoke. <laughs> yeah it, it's a bit rough right now like I even got like kind of a dry cough and it's like now whenever I go to the bars or the pubs everybody's like staring at you when you have that cough <laughs> it's like the, yeah the question mark of allergies smoke or coronavirus so yeah I, I sneezed at work today and like I was I they didn't want to look around to see if anyone like looked at me or not yeah you just have somebody behind you with one of those new guns <laughs> that is just, like, exactly you, taking your temperature <laughs> exactly um, but yeah, man. So, so tell me a little bit about you. Cause I know you got into, you were into like some fixed gear stuff for a while and then you, you started racing crits. Uh, how did you even get started? Cause I think one of the coolest things that I ever saw on social media that made me want to message you was somebody reached out to you and was like, Hey man, like how did you get into cycling? Because it's so expensive. And you were mm -hmm. like, dude, I threw $200 at it and I'm here now. And so I would love to dive into that. Cause I think a lot of people, Yes, while cycling is an expensive sport, I feel like if you want it bad enough, you can have it. Yeah, I mean, that, and that's what everything, like, if you really want something, like, bad enough, you can get it. It's like, you know, like a pair of Jordans. <laughs> yeah, so, sure. like, um, But, like, <clears throat> I, the fixed gear thing was kind of, like, it was already, like, it was getting pretty big, or, like, I had just found out about it. And I had rode a friend's bike, and I was like, oh, cool, you can, like, it's simple like you can ride forward you can ride backward and we all have little spoke cars in our, in our wheels there's like bikes look like a bag of skittles or different colors and everything <laughs> yeah um and then so i was like searching on facebook and this guy had a it was an old steel road bike frame that was converted into a, a single speed so it just had like a set of road dropouts but had like a single speed front and rear wheel pink tires pink bar tape it was some data track pit piece of drop bars and it was oh, yeah. 200 bucks and that was like a lot of money but like i skipped it together got it and that just kind of sparked everything like we used to i used to go to this bike shop in the valley um and mission mission was called fix fixie and we used to ride from there it was right next to sepulveda boulevard and we would ride from sepulveda all the way up and over sepulveda climb down all the way to venice and like eat pizza stare at girls and go back home <laughs> yeah that's um, a vibe oh that was that was the look right there yeah, that was yeah. a, i got the look <laughs> um we did that for a while and then i had a buddy of mine his name was jericho and he had this leader like there's a few companies at the time they were pretty big the leader bikes chinelli um and leader was like like this super like arrow shaped tubed fixed gear bike and it just to look cool it wasn't for like arrow gains and he had this was 735 and it was like this super amazing bike and i used to like race each other and see who can get the, the big fastest max speed on yeah. his bike um and he was like a big brother uh to me and he ended up like passing away on a critical mass ride because he gave his helmet to another kid Oh man! And so when he got to the bottom of this hill, he actually like hit the curb and like hit his head. Oh. So like, when I found out about it, I was I was like devastated, and I was like, I told the bike shop owner like, I want to race, I want to get sponsored by Leader, you know, like that's my goal, and it's like my tribute to Jericho. So like, he's like, our crew, we got a race, they could get on the track or something. So I started, I got certified in Sino, and I was doing these like chariot races and like match sprints and kieran's and they're like hey man you're really strong you can be good and i was like okay well maybe i can actually do something like siphon rated and i had yeah. this whole like like thought process like oh cool like well there's no black people in cycling yeah, i'm the only sure. one so i'll stand out and it's going to be great this whole lot of plan and then uh 
in the mix of that, six year pit racing started to come around. So I did one of those. I remember I did it, it was like around USC and I got lapped like four times before finishing the race. Oh. But it just like, it was amazing. Um, so I spent three years trying to get this like, like contract or just get looked at by this company. And then um, we did, Wolfpack Hustle was like the underground, you know, like race organizer. Yeah. So they had these like, these thousand feet drag race sprints in long beach and i was like oh cool this is what i'm good at so like i like showed up i had my like leader team kit on that they sent me and i was i raced and i got second to nate cook nate Koch. yeah, um, yeah. oh yeah track sprinter yeah track sprinter yeah so yeah. like a legit <laughs> track sprinter and that like a week later they like called me and they were like yo went off your contract oh wow. i was like this is crazy. And they pretty much put me on the map, but they were just like really big in the fixed gear world. And they gave me so much exposure. I did races all over the country. They took me to New York to race this Red Hook Criterion, which was huge at the time. Yeah. And that was the first time I ever traveled like outside of California yeah. and Texas, you know? So they like took me to New York. And I, I thought I was in like, Paris. I was like, this is crazy. Times Square. Um, and then in the mix of all that, um, I was like dedicated to fixed gear. I was like, roads are bikes are stupid, fixed gear and crits. And yeah. I had come up when I that was when I came across like Justin and Corey on like, YouTube. And I was like, and they were on road bikes and doing kind of the same thing that I was doing. I was like, this is this is insane you know and they were like at the top of the sport so like and then i ended up getting to meet them at like a group ride mm -hmm. and i was like like and it was crazy because like you know you don't see people who you know who are let's say celebrities or like big in in a scene you don't just like see lebron james shooting or you don't just see yeah for you sure. know and, you know like and that's what's cool about cycling so um, cool about cycling yeah because you get that opportunity to actually have that conversation you know exactly <clears throat> and they put on a clinic um at encino to like it was like a race clinic and um i had won one of the races and they're like oh cool like you know you you're you seem pretty good and then i challenged justin to like a match for like two out of three and i lost all times <laughs> yeah i was about <laughs> to say like, that's pretty bold because like even if you were the better sprinter, his handling is unreal. And it's, it's yeah, one of those it things. was, it was more of like, like, I think I was trying to prove myself a little bit, but I was just like, why not? Like, let's start the conversation. Yeah. yeah and let's just see where I'm at. And yeah, he yeah. made it seem like I was going to win, you know, and like I came out of turn, uh, turn three and I was like, I'm about to win. And he was like, just slowly creeping, creeping. He like waited to came out of turn four. He's like, all right, cool. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, all right, well, I'm not that good. Um, and then I kind of like, from that point on, they, everything just kind of like, just had this super high upward trajectory um, with the, with Endo Customs uh, starting the, con the concept team. And my friend That's Alonzo. Still a thing? Like, it is, yeah. They still, yeah. They, they just, you know, they're a really cool, like, just a group of dudes that just like to ride and like have fun and travel and they just yeah. they put out really dope content and they make dope kits yeah. so like that was pretty much like a thing from the get-go um and my friend alondo was like hey man like i think this is gonna be good for you like you should come on come on board and i said sure and then between the content the cool kits um and this exposure to a lot of the races that we did it blew up in like a year um, and then Canon though came on board, sponsored the team and they gave us like these CAD 12s and then they wanted us to do these like cool or races in Europe. So I got a call and they're like, Hey, you want to go to Germany? And I was like, uh, yeah, I've never been to Europe. They're like, cool. Your flight's booked. <laughs> and like, for like three weeks from now, like get ready. You better get and a I was like, what? Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> and Bobby Endo. Uh, from Mental Customs, he paid for my passport because I wow. didn't have it. He's like, here's the money. You just got to go get it. I was like, okay. Um, 
And so I'm, he's the reason why I've even been able to travel. Um, cause I just didn't have any money. And then he went sure. to Germany for two weeks in Berlin to do this fixed gear elimination style race in a indoor go-kart track. Oh, um, man. It's called, yeah, called Rad Race. Um, yeah, and, and that's not the one that's like in the parking garage, is it? Or is that the same one? Like you're kind yeah, of like racing they, so up they a have a, garage? They have a bunch of different races. They have yeah. like like a parking structure race. They have one in, in a go-kart track. They have like a, a 42 kilometer road race, like on like, on like, a, they shut off like one of the main roads in Germany and they point at point B and it has like a full like world tour finish sprint with like barriers and like a full like banners and everything That's they have um, and they have like these big like tours where like you pay 500 bucks and you get to ride from like I don't know like from France to Italy or whatever and it's all supported pay for your hotels, they give you food, and then they pay for your trip back home. Oh, wow. So they, they have, like, all these things to, that you can do. So if you didn't like crits, you can do sprints. If you don't like sprints, you can do these parking lot races. And it was always something for you to do. And um, it blew my mind. It was a culture shock. I got to yeah. go to Europe. I didn't have to pay a dime. Um, I was there for, like, two weeks. Didn't even – I forgot all about the race. I was just too busy having fun. They were like, <laughs> Just hey. exploring, yeah. Yeah, just exploring. And, like, my family was super happy about it. They are like, yo, like, no one in our family has been out of the country. Yeah. Um, and they, like uh, – that was, like, gave me, like, the thought process. Like, dude, like, I can probably – I can do something, you know? Like, yeah. I'm, I've been able to travel – certain parts of the country and now i'm in europe yeah. you know um and it gave me so much confidence to like really keep going um and i thought fixed gear was going to be around for a lot longer um but like within that i got to go to london i got to go to italy I got to go to uh um norway um like i've just been able to go like to a lot of different places just yeah. by racing um and didn't have to pay for really any of it and i got to experience so much cool stuff from when growing up i was like cool either you play basketball or you play football or you work at chipotle like those are your yeah. options <laughs> you yeah. know so like it's been a pretty awesome uh journey to where i am now um and you know i'm super stoked on it yeah and i and i kind of want to chat about that a little bit because you know like i felt you know even myself you made a comment you know being you know being a person of color being black in the sport of cycling like um even myself like i thought i had the out when i was a fat guy and like nobody would want to hang out around me and then now like just with the recent world of world events and like what's going on it's really woken me up to go hey dude like you've had so much fucking opportunity. Like, and I actually, I went into a restaurant in Atlanta. I was there for a track race. I was the only white guy in there. And I don't know what it was. I felt so uncomfortable. And I was just like, fuck, man, this is probably how they feel all the time. But the owner came, sits down with me, shooting the shit. He's like, because they almost looked at me like, hey, dude, do you know, do you know where you're at? But then it, they were like welcoming and super, super caring. And it's like, I can only imagine how you felt. So like the fact of you not only coming up through the sport, but how have you been able to kind of battle that or make the best out of a shit situation, I guess, more or less. I don't, I don't really don't even really know how to word it. No, I, I get it. Uh, um, first it's really cool that you like realize that. Cause I don't think a lot of people put that into perspective when they're put in that situation of like, Oh, this is how they must feel, you know, like, yeah. And it's a real thing where, you know, like, like I'm, is you're just not comfortable. Like yeah. realistically, like even being here, like I saw, I, I was like, yeah, I was <laughs> yeah. like, I was like, Man, like where, yeah. where are we at? Like I don't see anybody. And then like I saw yeah. someone, I was like, oh, okay, cool. Now I feel that much better, even though there's just yeah. being one person that's that that's around. Um, yeah. But like in the sport, like it didn't really bother me much because. The same people that I was racing fixed gear with 
were also racing but like some of the track races and stuff yeah. and a lot of the fixed gear scene is pretty diverse from very what diverse. i it's I'm very sure. diverse so like yeah. it wasn't until i started racing on the road that and even going to like like carson um and really realizing like there's not many people of color there um yeah. and when i started to like kind of make a name for myself through the concept team and like win like you know like two three races or cat three three races and like people but then people started like kind of like who is this dude you know and then I started to kind of see like like a negative vibe from certain from from people which made me look like more out of like like this is it seems a little bit more like hatred than yeah. than anything but I'm also just like like I, I really don't let a lot of that stuff get to me, you yeah, know, because sure. it's like, it takes so much to like really dislike or hate anyone. Yeah. And it's like, I can either be mad that you feel a type of way about me because of the color of my skin or because I'm here disrupting or making your sport better. Yeah. Uh, I ain't gonna say your sport, but making the sport better. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or I can just like, continue to do what, I, what I'm what i doing and I see it all I just don't really like acknowledge it unless it's like I feel the need to like really say something so like when all of the the riots were happening all over the, the world really but really like there was one in Santa Monica that happened down the street from my job at the time mm -hmm. and then they broke into my job and like stole a bunch of bikes and like the safe and everything. And it's like, I had this moment during that whole time and like where I saw like the video footage of George Floyd and like, I like imagined my face on his face. And it was yeah. just like a really deep moment where it's like, this could be me, you know? Yeah. And then I felt compelled to tell everyone like, you guys don't understand, like this could be me. You know, like you all love me, but understand like this literally didn't had nothing to do with background or what I did or in the past or whatever. It's just like it was it was him, but it could have been me, you know. And, and that's the scariest thing is like I don't think we'll ever be able to comprehend that. Cause I even said this like with just even talking to my wife and my wife being a female, it's like like there was a comedian that was like, I could go back in any part of time as a white male and be okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and like i'll never understand depression like that's one thing i'll never understand because of mm -hmm. who i am as like i'm a white dude what nate what, what what issues have i had like i had a decent upbringing i had a decent family like i've had opportunities i've gotten in trouble with the law and i've never been afraid of a police officer in that sense you know what i mean and and then you know seeing what's happening right now with um <clears throat> the guy in Kenosha, I'm blanking on the name, but like the fact that, you know, his, even his mom was like, we used to talk about it. And I used to be like, yo, that like, that could be you one day. And it was him. And I still couldn't even imagine it being him. So like, it's, it's crazy to think about, man. It's, it's, it's rough. Like I had, I've had, I've, I've talked about this, but I had like one time where like, it really scared me. Yeah. And like my sister um was always like be careful like there was extra shootings in like burbank it, it was like like really close you know and like a lot of like la like shootings going on um with between police and like you know people of color and i remember i was riding um because like we, we lived in uh slosson and broadway which is like it's, it's like it's the hood um yeah. so like I was riding to downtown and it was like 6.30, sun's out, it's going down. And I was just riding and I got pulled over. They were like, I didn't get off my bike. Cause my sister was like, the one, just don't get off your bike. Just sit there, don't move and do anything. And I'm like, my head, palms are sweating. I'm like worried to like get off the bike, put it on the wall. I like slowly walk into the wall. They open my backpack, where are you going? Where are you from? Where's your ID? whose bike is this? Like, are you sure it's your bike? What kind of bike is it? What do these tattoos mean? Like, where are your lights? And this is a whole thing. And it's like, I'm just going downtown. I have a race tomorrow. Like, this is my bike, Cannondale. This is a, a elephant tattoo. 
doesn't mean anything. Does it have a meaning, you know? man? It's just it, a tattoo. It's just a tattoo. Um, Jeez. And then it got like dark. So I was like, oh, I'll put my lights on. And you're like, oh, you do have lights. I was like, yeah, but like, I didn't need them before you stopped me because I was almost to my destination. Now I need them, you know? And they like yeah. ran my record. And it was like a 45 minute process. And like, I remember telling someone, it's like, well, I would have been so mad. I would have like yelled. I would have like started recording. I was like, yeah, I can't do that. Like, you don't <laughs> yeah. understand. Like, you know, like if I reach for anything or if I lash out anything, like that could be the end of me, Somehow. which is super crazy to think about. Yeah. And it blew my mind even in the times of like George Floyd where people still didn't understand it. And they were also people of color. Like we were rolling through and one of my friends was going to roll through a red light and he did. And it was a cop at the other the side of the intersection. I was like, yo, don't do it. And I stopped. He said, oh, dude, like, it's just Santa Monica police. Like, they don't really care. And I was like, dude, I'm, I'm black. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm not going to give them any reason to stop me. Like, you have to understand that. And he was like, oh, it's, dude, it's like, you need to chill out. And I was like, tell that to the guy that, like, literally just died. So I'm not going to chill out because you don't understand that, for me, small stuff to you is like life, life or death. Yeah. yeah it's 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 unreal because it's just like i think i think they were even saying it's like you know oh well we have bad apples and good apples and it's like well yeah well if american airlines came out with statements of like yeah we have bad pilots and good pilots this one just crashed i'm sorry like we'll just have to move on like that's a, like what you know yeah. like that's a thing that's what that's what you're gonna that's that's your statement to that we have bad apples and good apples it's like if you're gonna be a cop you can't have a bad day you can't take it out on somebody. It's not like at Wendy's where it's like you're pissed at somebody making the fries. Like it's just not going to work. Like somebody exactly. could die. Um, man, that's, that's unreal. And so like, anyways, to kind of round that back into the sport, it's like, uh, it, yeah. Like the fact of the matter is, it's like, I was even, you know, like I said, I was talking to my wife about this. It was like, never really hit me. Um, because I always felt like I was so, that, you know, it was hard for me to talk to people because I was the big guy or the, I didn't look like the cyclist. Mm -hmm. Dude, you're like the one of five guys. Like I could, I think I can name five, five black guys that ride bikes that, you know what I mean? Or people of mm -hmm. color in that sense. And it, it's scary. And I think that's the real issue with the sport um, for sure. Um, but anyways, so you've moved to Boulder. Yes. You're now in Boulder. What are you doing in Boulder, man? Like what's going on up there? What's new up there? I mean, you've, you've, you've escaped the smoke to now get to altitude. To yeah. Only I, altitude smoke. It, <laughs> literally. Uh, a lot has changed. Um, I got a new job working awesome. for Hunt Wheels. So you um, are they a new company? Girl, How old are they? I think it's been, I don't mean to put Ooh. you on the spot with your new job. I it's probably like, know like, this, but <laughs> yeah. I would say like five. Does Kelly five know? Six years. Okay. Kelly? Five years. Five years. Yeah. Um, so the U UK brand, yeah. they make some pretty fast wheels, um, but they're at like a really affordable cost, but they don't really like try or, or feel the need to like market the cost. They just market how good the wheels are. Yeah. And I've ridden a handful of wheels and I'm riding some right now and I'm like, these things are actually pretty fast. Um, yeah, for they sure. roll really well. They're good in crosswinds or stiff. Um, but like I got a job with them, which is great. Cause it's like, it's an actual career job. It's not like every job I've, I've actually have had in the past, which has been like, I need something to get me by to the job or I need something that can work and make money while I race. Yeah. yeah you know, for sure, yeah. I know that's always about, been yeah. my, my mentality. So, um, I got a job and I came here like a month ago or so, okay. like a little over a month ago and, um, came here to see Kelly yeah. and I we like, she like showed me around and I was like, oh, like, I think I'll move to Boulder in like October or something like for a year, see how I like it. Like, I would love to move. And then like, I got offered the job. Or I, like, she told me about the job. And I was like, oh, cool. And she's like, and moving to Boulder. And I was like, oh, cool. Okay. And then everyone <laughs> in my previous job who came in to buy stuff, they're like, we're going to Boulder. We're going to Colorado. It's so amazing. I was like, I think someone's telling me 
I need to go to yeah to you Colorado. Need to go to, you need to go to Colorado. So sure. everything just aligned like super perfectly, and yeah. I was like, cool, like you know, I'll be able to train at altitude. There's lots of mountains and climbs. I love to be in the mountains. It's nature. It's like LA is so fast paced and so stressful and yeah. everything here just seemed a lot slower. So I kind of allowed me to kind of just slow down a little bit and go at a decent pace. Yeah. Our traffic's so. going to seem like a good day for you. Like the, yeah. our traffic's, our traffic's amazing. You'll love it. Yeah. Like, people, my first time riding, like people were saying like, hello, people were like waving out of the cars. Everyone's yeah. like, waving on their bikes and cars are going to the opposite side of the road. I was like, what is this? Yeah. Like, this is Boulder. I was like, what? This is too nice. This can't yeah, be it. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. I mean, like it is a, it is a cycling filled area, especially like, I mean, you got hunt wheels, you got stages, you got training peaks, you got, I mean, you can just go down the list. You got specialized has a hub there, you know, you got mm-hmm. rebel mountain bikes. Like, I mean, the list goes on when it comes to cycling and when it just mm-hmm. comes to being outdoors. Um, mm-hmm. So you, you definitely move to a good area and, uh, we all know that like, you, you know, you're getting into some team switching and, and, and definitely into some goals, but with the coronavirus and everything that's going on, like, like, where do you see Dante 2021, man? Uh, 2022. I mean, I, you know, listening to your Encino inception, I, my track heart wants to go, Hey, you should start riding the track a little bit, man. Like you would probably be pretty good on the track, yeah. but it's where, funny. where do you see yourself going? It's funny you say that because that's actually like on my mind. Um, my goal, like I still plan to be very competitive and still race. Yeah. Um, my goals at the moment, like if I name them off, like I really want to, uh, like nationals. Um, that's been like on my list to like have a national title, and I feel like a Criterion and or road national title is something that I could definitely do. Um, mm-hmm. So like I really want to do nationals. I love crits like so much, um, and like I, I really want to like win some of my favorite crits, like jumble like Tulsa, um, and just race. Um, I have had thoughts of going back on the track, and um, like really do focus on. I've actually grown to love endurance races. So like, yeah, like. Uh, points races um scratch races omniums really and even like like try on maybe some like pursuits like um like i would love to do like a team pursuit or like like kilos so yeah sweet right on (laughs) i'm I'm all for a kilo man i'm not like a like a like a purebred just like super powerful like i have power but like i have a long power yeah um and i've come to realize that over my first year with Legion, um, yeah. that like, I don't have, I didn't have the power that Justin and Corey put out, they you know. So when we would do sprints, they would like immediately get like two or three bike lengths on me mm-hmm. or not like two or three like wheels on me. But like after like the first five pedal strokes, I'm like clawing back cause my power's long. Yeah. So, um, stuff like that is what I want to do. And then I've really been over the past like year, like really been wanting to figure out what I could do effectively as like like a, an outreach, like junior outreach program. Yeah. Because I feel like a lot of people like, I'm going to give kids bikes. I'm going to get, you know, this company to give me bikes and I'm going to give it to my neighborhood and walk away. And it's yeah. like, it's so easy. But like if it was me and I wasn't into bikes, I'm probably going to sell it and make a hundred bucks and go buy it. I don't know, some Nikes. Yeah. So it's sure. like really doing something where I can like, hey man, like this is what I've been able to do with the same exact bike that you have. You know, yeah. like it's hard, but it's rewarding, you know, or like, have you ever been ridden to the beach? Have you ever even been to the beach that you thought you couldn't go because you don't have a car? I know yeah. a lot of kids in the hood that don't even know what the beach looked like. Wow. You know, and it's like 10 miles from them. That's insane. Because growing up for me like going to like santa monica or venice was like equivalent to a 10 year old being like i want to go to europe i'm gonna go to france yeah like i can't just like wake up and be like i'm going to france and that's kind of how i felt to be like i'm gonna go to like ride or in beverly i'm gonna go to like beverly hills or i'm gonna go to 
the beach, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So like whenever I was in the car and we like went to the beach, it seemed like this like super far journey. And I was there, I was like, oh, this is, this is crazy. And I yeah. never knew how to get there, but normally really realistically it was like 10 miles away. Um, but I wanted to like show that somehow. And I'm always brainstorming on like, how can I do this effectively? And not just, just people of color, like really everyone. Yeah. Um, and not just like racing, just like ride your bike. Like yeah. I ride my bike to work, get groceries, get ice cream, like to a race. <laughs> Like everywhere, you know. Yeah, and well, it's... The, you would get along with Steve Cullen, and I don't know if you've met that guy, but one of the coolest things he said on my podcast was he legit was just like, I don't think it'll be in my lifetime, but one day they'll just be crit racers. There won't be a black crit racer, there won't be a Mexican crit racer, there won't be, you know, a white crit racer. It'll just be crit racers, like just mm-hmm. people. And so when you made that comment, it's like not just people of color, everyone. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's super cool to kind of hopefully one day it's everyone, you know? And yeah, I, I, th- I definitely think you're in a great hub to kind of start that and uh, and uh, eventually get that going um, for sure. Yeah, it's, it's, it's important, you know? And like, I'm like, okay, cool. I have this following. I have so many eyes on me. Like, what can I do with it? You know, you know, I can say like hey look at me and my cool bike that's nice but i can also be like like this is what i'm doing you know like this is for the future because eventually like there's gonna have many people to replace me or replace you know like rasan bahadi replace justin replace all the all of us you know yeah. and we need that and the sport also needs to be welcoming you know like yeah. I tell people this all the time, like if you're on a group ride and a junior or like someone who's new in, you can tell they're new and they like, I don't know, like cross your wheel a little bit or they, you know, uh, have their music up too loud or whatever it is. You can do one of two things. You can like yell at them and like, yo, like what the hell are you doing? You're stupid, like get out the way and make them not want to come back ever again. And be like, hey man, like this is not safe. Like this is what you can do to be a little bit better you know, and yeah. like, all right, cool. Thank you. Like, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm glad that someone's going to like show me something and it's going to make them want to come back. So like, I feel like there's lots of segregation within the sport too, where it's like, you know, uh, like track riders, like road riders, crit racers, or oh, yeah. the group ride guys, the guy that don't, they are like, they're strong enough to race, but like racing is stupid. Let's go get KOMs. Like everyone's yeah. in their group, which is fine, but it's like, even then you still got to make it welcoming, you know, like, because none of us are going to do this at the level that we're doing it forever, you know? And yeah. then a lot of people think that like people bike racing are, are assholes. Yeah. <laughs> you know? well, it's and, just crazy how you like, you show up to a ride and, and literally the amount of like the up and downs mm-hmm. that you're about to get when you're the new guy, yeah. it's all based on what you're wearing what you look like, what skin color you are, like what bike you have, what shifting you have, you know? And it's just like, it's insane. Like I just don't get it. Best story I can give you, I did the Rose Bowl ride my first time. I I had, I think I didn't even have a a, a road bike yet. I had uh, a track bike and I didn't have a helmet because I'm a fix, like we don't wear helmets. So like I don't have a helmet. I show up um and i'm in the group and don't even really care what bike i was riding i was the only person without a helmet and uh, everyone one guy in the back he's like you don't have a helmet man i was like yeah and he's like there we go and i was like <laughs> okay and every single person get out the way where's your helmet this dude's crazy blah, 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 blah. and then i went from being like ha 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 whatever i don't care to being like like feeling like oh, like this is kind of like crappy. Everyone's like giving me shit because I don't have a helmet. And I didn't want to be there. And I don't think I went back for like a while. Yeah. And then then I realized like I should probably wear a helmet everywhere I go. One, yeah. safety. But um, like it could win different way. Like, hey, man. Here's like, a helmet. 
here's you know a how many, helmet. How many of those guys probably have like ten helmets just sitting yeah. in their garage collecting? Or this? like, yo, you, you next time like you can't do this job without it with a helmet, or like go to the back because it's not safe. Yeah, something. There's so many different ways that could have went, but and I get it. Like in certain circumstances, you're kind of just like concerned for yourself, but also like it's a much bigger picture. You know, sure. it's like like we need more positivity and the sport to be more welcoming or else it's just going to continue to like suffer tank yeah i i still to this day think that's the, the issue with crits isn't necessary in cycling in general isn't the fact of money we don't have money because there's no there's no positivity in the sense of just equality and the sense of you know welcoming it's like nobody wants to support cycling so therefore nobody wants to put money into cycling because nobody else wants to join like be a part of it like i can i'm really nervous to see what happens to our membership fees after (laughs) after this whole coronavirus thing like yeah it's gonna go one of one of two ways like we're either gonna get all priced out of the sport no matter if you're a doctor a dentist or whatever or there's just gonna be no federation and so then you know crits and races it's like we're getting to a point where crits i mean to start a race ninety dollars hundred dollars the thing the reason why fixed gear urban underground fixture racing was so dope was because you show up you show up with a kit a bike and a helmet you didn't actually didn't even know where have a, a, a a kit there's a bike and a helmet and some foot retention and they're like 10 bucks you give them 10 bucks, this is the course, you do 30 laps or 40 minutes and three laps to go, winner takes all or top three, get whatever. And I remember we used to show up and there'll be 180 people in the race. And between, and it was no age category, it was just like men's field, 180 and it was $10. Yeah. And it was split that between top three and I would take home Jeez. like $700 in a like what was probably a cat four race which is insane you know but in my real opinion like like road racing is not for it's not our culture you know like like i feel like i always felt like track racing like six day style track racing and crits would be like is the only thing that would probably like say cycling in America because yeah. it's easy to watch. You can drop it into like a city and be like, Hey, we're going to stay here for a day. It's good for businesses around. Um, and I think it, it also has to do with how it's marketed. Like, I don't know if you've seen that formula one series on Netflix. Like, uh, no, no, but I actually, it's funny that you mentioned that a buddy of mine was telling me that I need to watch it. So. Dude, I know nothing about Formula One and I now love Formula One. Yeah, and that's what he was saying because I, I was literally the same person. I was like, dude, I don't watch Formula One. And he was like, you got to watch it and you'll you fall You have in love to watch it, it because yeah. if, you t- if you watch it, like watch it and then think of a crit race. And if yeah. a crit race was like shot and, and marketed the same way or a similar sense of Formula One, like, it would I, I feel like it would do so well because like the live live streams are great that we have in like usa crits because obviously it's a live stream like my parents can watch it yeah. but like you can't feel the speed you can't feel what's happening you just see like a camera shot that's like pan, it's like panning out um as you're coming by but if you into walk a corner, yeah. into a corner yeah and then in the formula one race they have like great shots they have onboard footage like like there's audio and even when you watch the live races, like like every single episode of the racing, my heart's racing and my palms are sweating. I'm like, and I'm like going like this, turning my head as you're like going into corners. And yeah. like, this is crazy. Well, dude, you would you would fall in. I need to like introduce you to Dale Hughes. First, we need to get your Madison skills up. But you yeah. got to meet Dale Hughes of Lexus Velodrome because okay. that guy is on to something. Like he's paying the pro field to show up and he's flying him out. He's then not only is he flying him out, but he's putting on a show. It's on, it's fun. It's hilarious because it's on PBS, but he's like, this is the best I can do right now. Like this is the best, like I can get, but I want to be on live TV and he's live streaming on Facebook. And like, there's like 5,000 people watching this from all over the world on a 166. 
but you're racing with a mixture of everyone and all these different pros. But man, yeah. you, you got to check that out because it's literally everybody's gear restricted to an 88 inch gear Whoa. and uh, it's on a 166 meter track. Uh, prize money's great. I end up leaving there anywhere from $500 to a thousand dollars over a weekend. Um, I'm usually well taken care of. I'm usually housed and, you know, hanging out with all the other pro riders that are all from all over the country. Mm -hmm. And yeah, dude, you got, that might actually be another avenue in the winter, especially in the winter for you. Cause he, mm -hmm. he wants the road riders to race in the summer. And then in the winter, he runs this winter series from like November, October ish time. He usually does Oktoberfest and it's a four day Madison race and you race Madison for four days. That's and then, crazy. and then it goes all the way into March and they do this whole series, but man, it's one a month and like you could pretty much make rent. Kelly would be happy about that too. Yeah. So yeah. it all, it all kind of works itself out. <laughs> Get that paper, you know? <laughs> exactly. It's, but yeah, dude, so you definitely got to check that out. But dude, it's so cool to hear what you're doing and got, you know, what you got going on. I hope I'm able to come up to Boulder and ride with you guys soon. Um, but I wish you the best of luck at hunt man and i'm trying to hold you up all night and uh but yeah i appreciate it dude and if you guys want to check out dante's social media just check in the link in the description below and yeah other than that guys thanks so much for listening dante thank you man thank you i appreciate it man cheers